Top 25 Database Administrator Interview Questions and Answers In this video, we will explore the top 25 interview questions that aspiring database administrators are likely to encounter. Each question is carefully selected to help you understand what hiring managers are looking for and candidates. We will also provide comprehensive answers that highlight key concepts and best practices in database management. This will equip you with the knowledge needed to excel in your upcoming interviews and boost your confidence. 1. What are the differences between clustered and non-clustered indexes? Clustered indexes determine the physical order of data in a table, meaning the data rows are stored in the same order as the index. There can only be one clustered index per table due to this physical arrangement. In contrast, non-clustered indexes maintain a separate structure from the data rows. They contain pointers to the actual data, allowing for quicker searches without affecting the physical storage order. Non-clustered indexes can be created on multiple columns, providing flexibility for different query patterns. This distinction significantly impacts query performance and data retrieval efficiency. 2. Explain ACID properties in a database system. ACID stands for atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Atomicity ensures that all operations within a transaction are completed successfully. If any operation fails, the transaction is aborted, maintaining database integrity. Consistency guarantees that a transaction will bring the database from one valid state to another, ensuring all data rules are followed. Isolation allows transactions to operate independently, so the results of one transaction are not visible to others until they are committed. Durability ensures that once a transaction has been committed, its changes are permanent, even in the event of a system failure. These properties provide a reliable framework for transaction management in database systems. 3. How do you ensure database security? Ensuring database security involves several layers of protection. First, implement strong authentication mechanisms, such as multi-factor authentication, to restrict access to authorized users only. Next, utilize role-based access controls to limit permissions based on user roles. Data encryption, both at rest and in transit, is crucial to protect sensitive information. Regularly update database software and apply security patches to prevent vulnerabilities. Conduct regular audits and monitoring to detect unauthorized access or anomalies. Finally, educate users on best practices to minimize risks associated with social engineering attacks. 4. What is normalization? Explain its different normal forms. Normalization is a process in database design that aims to reduce data redundancy and improve data integrity. It involves organizing data into tables and defining relationships between them. There are several normal forms, each addressing specific types of anomalies. 1. First normal form, 1NF, requires that each column contains atomic values, with each entry being unique. 2. Second normal form, 2NF, builds on 1NF by ensuring that all non-key attributes are fully functionally dependent on the primary key. 3. Third normal form, 3NF, requires that all attributes are not only dependent on the primary key but also independent of each other, eliminating transitive dependencies. Each normal form reduces redundancy and enhances data integrity, leading to more efficient database structures. 5. How do you perform database backup and recovery? Performing database backup and recovery involves several key steps. First, identify the backup strategy, full, incremental, or differential. Full backups capture the entire database, while incremental and differential backups only store changes since the last backup. Use tools or commands specific to the database management system, DBMS, to schedule regular backups, ensuring backups are stored securely and tested for integrity. For recovery, determine the point in time recovery needs and utilize the backup files and transaction logs to restore the database to the desired state, ensuring minimal data loss and downtime. Regularly review and update the backup strategy to meet evolving business needs. 6. What is the difference between a primary key and a unique key? A primary key is a field or a combination of fields that uniquely identifies each record in a table. It cannot contain null values and there can be only one primary key per table. A unique key, on the other hand, also ensures uniqueness for values in a column but allows for one null value per column. While a table can have multiple unique keys, it can only have one primary key. Both are essential for maintaining data integrity, but their constraints and use cases differ. 7. Describe the steps to optimize a slow running query. To optimize a slow running query, start by analyzing the execution plan to identify bottlenecks. Look for table scans, missing indexes, or inefficient joins. Next, ensure that the query is using appropriate indexes, and consider adding new indexes where necessary. Rewrite the query for efficiency, such as reducing the number of rows processed or simplifying complex joins. Additionally, check for unnecessary select columns, and use WHERE clauses to filter results early. Regularly updating statistics can also help the optimizer make better decisions. Lastly, test changes in a safe environment before deploying to production. 8. How do you monitor database performance? Monitoring database performance involves several key practices. 
First, utilize performance metrics such as query response time, CPU usage, and memory consumption to assess health. Tools like Performance Monitor, SQL Profiler, or third-party applications can help track these metrics. Regularly check for slow running queries and optimize them using indexing or query rewriting. Set up alerts for unusual spikes in resource usage or errors. Conduct periodic health checks to identify bottlenecks and ensure optimal configuration. Finally, review logs for any anomalies that may indicate underlying issues affecting performance. 9. What is replication and how is it implemented? Replication is a process that allows data from one database server, the master, to be copied to one or more database servers, the replicas or slaves, to ensure data consistency and availability. It is implemented through various methods, including snapshot replication, transactional replication, and merge replication. Snapshot replication takes a snapshot of the data at a specific point in time, while transactional replication continuously streams changes from the master to the replicas. Merge replication allows updates on both master and replicas, synchronizing changes periodically. This setup enhances load balancing, disaster recovery, and fault tolerance, ensuring that applications can access up-to-date data across different locations. 10. What tools do you use for database administration? When managing databases, several tools are essential for effective administration. SQL Server Management Studio, SSMS, is widely used for SQL Server databases, providing a user-friendly interface for queries, backup, and performance tuning. For Oracle databases, Oracle Enterprise Manager is invaluable for monitoring and managing performance, configuration, and security. Other notable tools include pgAdmin for PostgreSQL, MySQL Workbench for MySQL databases, and tools like Redgate SQL Toolbelt for additional features such as schema and data comparison. Automation tools like Ansible can also facilitate deployment and management tasks. 11. A user complains the database is very slow, how would you troubleshoot? When a user reports slow database performance, start by gathering information about the issue, including specific queries causing the slowness and the time of occurrence. Use monitoring tools to check server resources like CPU, memory, and disk I.O. Analyze slow query logs to identify problematic queries. Check for missing indexes or poorly designed queries that could benefit from optimization. Additionally, ensure that the database statistics are up to date. If necessary, consider increasing resources or optimizing server configurations to improve performance. 12. What would you do if a database suddenly crashes? In the event of a database crash, the first step is to assess the situation thoroughly. Check the database logs to identify the cause of the crash, whether it's due to hardware failure, software bugs, or corrupted data. Next, I would initiate the recovery process, which may involve restoring from the latest backup if necessary. It's crucial to run consistency checks on the database after restoration to ensure data integrity. I would also communicate with stakeholders about the issue and expected downtime. Finally, I would analyze the incident to implement preventive measures, reducing the risk of future crashes. 13. How do you handle deadlocks in SQL Server or Oracle? Deadlocks occur when two or more transactions are waiting for each other to release resources, resulting in a standstill. To handle deadlocks, first, identify deadlock situations using system views or tools like SQL Server Profiler. Implement deadlock detection mechanisms that automatically terminate one of the transactions, usually the one with the least amount of work done, to allow others to proceed. Additionally, optimize queries and indexing to reduce contention and avoid long transactions. Use proper transaction isolation levels and implement retry logic in applications to gracefully handle deadlock scenarios. 14. How do you migrate a database from one server to another? Migrating a database involves several steps. First, assess the current environment and choose a suitable method for migration, such as backup and restore, export, import, or replication. Next, ensure compatibility between the source and destination servers regarding database versions and configurations. After that, backup the existing database and validate the backup. Transfer the backup file to the new server and restore it. Finally, test the migrated database for integrity, functionality, and performance before switching over, ensuring that users have minimal downtime during the process. 15. Describe a time you resolved a major database issue under pressure. In a previous role, I encountered a critical database outage during peak business hours, impacting user access and transactions. The system was unresponsive, and I had to act swiftly. I immediately assessed the logs and identified a corrupted index as the root cause. Communicating with the team, I initiated a rebuild of the index while ensuring that users were informed about the temporary downtime. Within an hour, the index was restored, and the database performance improved significantly. This experience reinforced my ability to stay calm under pressure and effectively troubleshoot issues while maintaining clear communication with stakeholders. 16. How do you design a scalable database schema? Designing a scalable database schema involves several key principles. First, focus on normalization to eliminate data redundancy, which enhances efficiency. 
Use indexing strategically to speed up query performance without over-indexing, which can slow down write operations. Implement partitioning to distribute data across multiple tables, improving access speed. Use foreign keys judiciously to maintain data integrity while allowing flexibility. Consider future growth patterns and choose a data model, relational, no SQL, that fits your scalability needs. Regularly review and refactor the schema as application requirements evolve. 17. What are stored procedures and when would you use them? Stored procedures are pre-compiled SQL statements that are stored in a database. They allow developers to execute complex queries efficiently by reducing network traffic and improving performance. You would use stored procedures when you need to enforce business logic, perform batch operations, or ensure data integrity. Additionally, they can simplify security management by restricting direct access to tables. Using stored procedures also facilitates code reusability, making it easier to maintain and update database interactions. 18. What are views and how do they differ from tables? Views are virtual tables created by a query that selects data from one or more tables. They do not store data themselves but provide a way to simplify complex queries, enhance security by restricting access to specific columns or rows, and present data in a different format. Unlike tables, views can be updated under certain conditions, but changes made to a view may affect the underlying tables. Tables store actual data, while views serve as a dynamic representation of that data, allowing for easier data manipulation and retrieval. 19. How do you handle schema changes in a production environment? Handling schema changes in a production environment requires careful planning and execution. First, assess the impact of the change on current applications and users. Implement version control for database schema to track changes. Next, consider using techniques like blue-green deployments or feature toggles to minimize downtime. It's essential to communicate with stakeholders about potential disruptions. After deploying changes, monitor the system closely for any issues. Rollback procedures should be established in case of failures, ensuring that the database remains stable throughout the process. 20. What is the role of a data dictionary? A data dictionary serves as a central repository of information about the data within a database. It contains metadata, which is data about data, including details such as table structures, field types, relationships, constraints, and user permissions. This resource is essential for database administrators, developers, and analysts to understand the database architecture. It facilitates data management, ensures consistency, supports data governance, and aids in query optimization. By providing a clear picture of data entities, it enables efficient data usage and informed decision-making. 21. How do you handle working with developers and system admins? When working with developers and system admins, clear communication is essential. Regular meetings help align goals, expectations, and project timelines. Establishing a collaborative environment fosters teamwork, allowing for knowledge sharing and problem solving. Using tools like version control systems and project management software can streamline workflows and ensure everyone is on the same page. Being open to feedback and suggestions from both developers and system admins enhances relationships and improves project outcomes. Addressing issues promptly and maintaining transparency builds trust and leads to successful partnerships. 22. Tell me about a time you successfully managed multiple databases, projects. In my previous role, I was tasked with managing three different databases for separate projects simultaneously. I started by organizing a detailed project timeline and checklist for each database, prioritizing tasks based on deadlines and project requirements. I held regular meetings with stakeholders to ensure alignment and address any issues promptly. Utilizing database management tools, I automated routine maintenance tasks, which saved time and minimized errors. By maintaining clear communication and setting realistic expectations, I successfully delivered all projects on time while ensuring high performance and data integrity. 23. How do you stay updated with database technologies and best practices? Staying updated with database technologies and best practices involves several strategies. Regularly reading industry blogs, attending webinars, and participating in online forums are essential. Subscribing to newsletters from database vendors and influential tech organizations provides valuable insights into new features and trends. Engaging with professional networks on platforms like LinkedIn can facilitate knowledge exchange. Additionally, enrolling in relevant courses or certifications can enhance skills and understanding of emerging technologies. Actively experimenting with new tools and techniques in test environments also aids in practical learning. 24. How do you prioritize tasks during peak workloads? When prioritizing tasks during peak workloads, I first assess the urgency and importance of each task. Utilizing a matrix based on these criteria helps identify which tasks require immediate attention. I communicate with team members to understand their current workload and deadlines, ensuring alignment with project goals. Implementing time management techniques, such as the Pomodoro technique, allows me to focus on high-priority tasks without distractions. Additionally, I remain flexible, ready to adjust priorities as new information arises, 
ensuring that essential deliverables are met while maintaining productivity across the team. 25. How do you document your work and ensure knowledge sharing? Documentation is essential for maintaining clarity and efficiency. I use a combination of tools like Confluence or SharePoint for centralized documentation, ensuring that all procedures, configurations, and troubleshooting steps are recorded. I also create detailed guides and FAQs for common issues. Regularly scheduled knowledge sharing sessions with the team help disseminate information effectively. Additionally, I encourage peer reviews of documentation to ensure accuracy and comprehensiveness. This collaborative approach fosters an environment where knowledge is readily accessible, reducing dependency on individuals. In this video, we've explored the top 25 database administrator interview questions and answers, equipping you with the knowledge and confidence to tackle your next interview. Understanding these key topics will not only help you stand out as a candidate but also deepen your grasp of essential database management concepts. If you found this content helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more insightful videos. Your support helps us create more valuable resources for aspiring database professionals. Thank you for watching.